Hey guys, this is Jacob from RoboFlow, here today to talk about mosaic data augmentation, which is a new and very exciting augmentation technique in computer vision. Uh, so a little bit of motivation for what we're going to be talking about today. Mosaic data augmentation is a new augmentation that is pushing the state of the art for object detection mo models. Here we have two graphs. We have uh, YOLO v4 on the left and we have YOLO v5 on the right. Both of, both of them are employing mosaic data augmentation to push their performance on state-of-the-art object detection tasks. So as you can see, these models are getting better and better as they're improving in average precision, which is the y-axis of these graphs. And the way that they're doing this is they're employing new model techniques, but they're also employing new data augmentation techniques. And oftentimes the data augmentation techniques outweigh the importance of the modeling techniques. And mosaic data augmentation is one of those cutting edge augmentations that is really pushing the state of the art of these, of these, uh, of these models. But it's, it's very important to know that the mosaic augmentation is applied on the COCO data set, which is a general data set. So it's important to know the augmentation for yourself before you jump into your own object detection modeling task. So now here's a little bit of a roadmap of the video that we're going to be going through today. Um, first, we're going to be talking about uh, mosaic augmentation predecessors, which are cutout and cut mix. After that, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of what exactly mosaic that data augmentation is. Uh, and then we'll talk about exactly how one would go through and implement mosaic augmentation all the way from the theory all the way through uh, the actual imp implementation in code. Um, and then we're going to talk about uh, when mosaic might work best or when it might not work well. Um, after that, we're going to talk about how we could possibly improve Mosaic going forward as researchers and as, as, um, as individuals in computer vision, what might be the next thing for Mosaic data augmentation. And then after that, I'm going to do a little bit of a live demo where we're actually going to implement Mosaic on a live data set and we're going to see uh, Mosaic actually transform our images. Um, all right, so moving along. The first thing we're going to cover here is the predecessor augmentations to Mosaic. So this is important um, as we're kind of thinking about what motivated researchers to come up with Mosaic data augmentation and, and what ultimately has led to um, Mosaic, the birth of, of Mosaic data augmentation. So um, these techniques here are uh, image augmentation techniques that are regularization techniques. So uh, regular, regularization technique is designed to uh, basically um, make it so your model doesn't overfit to the training data that it's seeing and it's it's able to um, adapt robustly as it's thrown into new data environments. Uh, so here we can see um, a couple of these uh, augmentation techniques. So here we have cutout, um, which is basically where you cut out a chunk of the image um, and that is supposed to uh, block the model from learning features in parts of the image that it might rely too highly on. So for example, uh, in order for a model to identify St. Bernard, it might rely very heavily on the, uh, the dog's head here. Um, so you might want to cut out this piece so it actually starts to learn to identify dogs through uh, the back part of, of the animal. So that, that's one way that you might be kind of trying to teach your model robustness and and being able to adapt to new environments. Um, now, the other one is cut mix, where instead of just cutting out a black square, uh, you actually take a piece of a different image uh, and you move that piece over to where the cutout was originally. So here, um, for St. Bernard and Poodle, we can see we've actually mixed those two images together. And if you're looking at the cam for each of these, uh, there's more activation for the St. Bernard right on that back half of the dog um, and for Poodle, there's actually more on the right half. Uh, so that, that's showing that the model is kind of starting to learn robustness to be able to identify these things in different places by cutting and mixing different pieces of the images. Uh, so now moving along, uh, this is the mosaic data augmentation. Uh, so this is kind of coming out of that idea of mixing images together um, to make the model um, perform more uh, in different scenarios and teach it to localize objects in different places. So mosaic data augmentation takes the image and it tiles it into four and then puts those four into four different corners uh, and combines all the annotations in that one place. 
Um, so here you can see uh, I'm, I have a mask uh, wearing data set and all these people are wearing masks and they're tagged in different places. Um, but you can see that there are different images that have been brought together. Um, so the, uh, the model is going to have to localize these objects uh, in different places and it's going to have to learn slightly different contexts that are around it so it won't start to rely too heavily on what it originally sees um, in the training set because the training set is going to be multiplied in all these different ways and it's going to have to be learning um, all around that. So this is a very, very powerful augmentation and uh, certainly the academic results are there to back that up. Um, so uh, this, is, this is Mosaic and this is um, a very important uh, augmentation we're going to be going through now how you might actually implement this if you wanted to um, on your own data set. So um, now I'm going to go through how Mosaic is implemented in uh, the YOLO v5 repo. Um, and this is uh, not necessarily the only way to do it. In fact, we will point out some downsides and uh, how those could be addressed. Um, and uh, here I'm just going to go through, uh, basically uh, walk through the steps that uh, happen in YOLO v5. So here, um, basically I've, I've overestimated the, the differences here, but um, you may have, you'll bring four images together. Those will be picked randomly from the data set and you'll want to combine these into, uh, into the mosaic pattern. Um, so the first thing that uh, the YOLO v5 repo does is it resizes each of those images um, to be the same size, uh, and then it brings all four of those together in the same grid. So here we have a grid, let's say uh, it was resized to 416 by 416, uh, and then all those images are pasted together. Um, so the other thing you need to keep in mind is each one of those images will have uh, bounding boxes where the objects will be localized with bounding boxes and all those will need to be brought in at the same time. So now you have all four images all resized, all their bounding boxes are resized, and they're all bought, brought into a uh, four by four uh, or two by two square um, of the mosaic map. Um, and then finally, after you kind of have all these images resized and stitched together, um, you'll take a random prop from center in there where the uh, where this red line is representing, and that will be your final image. And you'll be doing that randomly as you're bringing in different images um, for each epoch. You're going through and you're changing um, the way all these mosaics are mapping. Um, and then you um, go ahead and cut that out. And there you go. There you have your uh, mosaic uh, tiled image. Uh, so that's uh, how one would actually go about and implement mosaic in practice. Now let's talk about um, some scenarios in which Mosaic works best and some scenarios where it might not work so well. Um, so this is really a big heavy hitting uh, augmentation so you need to be careful when you use it and and know, uh, know when to not use it. Um, so some examples that are really good for Mosaic um, are things like aerial imagery where objects could kind of appear at any place on the ground um, but you might want to be moving those objects around in different places um, and in different contexts to kind of be teaching the model a little bit more robustness. Um, it's good a lot, a lot of times for real world objects, like if you're detecting fish or animals or various things that are kind of out in scenes because these things can usually be kind of moved around uh, like we were seeing with, uh, with the dogs uh, with cut out and cut mix. Um, those are good examples where Mosaic is probably really going to improve uh, the performance of your model by uh, leveraging the, the power of your training set. Um, uh, another good area to use Mosaic just in general is if you have only, um, you have, if you have low object distribution and you know that you're going to want to be moving your objects into different parts of the image, uh, so this is a good way to be using Mosaic. Um, some examples of when not to use Mosaic, um, like uh, if you have a data set of written documents with bounding boxes around text or, or numbers, um, this is probably going to be a bad place to use Mosaic because it's going to become all jumbled and it'll be very unrealistic. Um, another bad place to use Mosaic is if you have large, prominent, and upfront objects because these will be getting chopped down and randomly cropped. Um, and so you'll just be kind of getting these big pieces of things uh, that's uh, not, so easy, not so easy to use. Um, and then uh, another example where 
um, one should be a little bit careful uh, in using Mosaic is with uh, fixed location objects. So this has to do with any data set where uh, you actually know that you want those objects to be in the same place. So for example, uh, if you're scanning a tray and you know the tray is going to be set on the table in the exact spot every time that the camera goes over and takes the image, you don't want to use Mosaic because that's going to be shifting it around um, in different parts of the image, um, which would be rather unrealistic and would actually uh, end up hurting your model when, when you end up uh, going to deploy it. Uh, so now here are some of my thoughts on uh, improving Mosaic. I'd be curious in the comments uh, if, you, if you have some yourself. Uh, so uh, one thing about the current uh, implementation that we talked about uh, is that since it's randomly cropping there from, uh, from the center is it's actually undersampling the middle of the image because it's more likely for uh, the image to get in included either in the top or the bottom than it is to go all the way down to the middle or all the way up to the middle. Um, so that's actually uh, one of the things that we've addressed in our implementation of Mosaic at RoboFlow. And we've seen some promising results uh, to that end. Uh, another idea that I had was um, Mosaic. I originally thought that it was just tiling the images equally out in a four by four square. Um, so I, I thought that it was actually kind of zooming, uh, zooming out. Um, so I thought this would be kind of a good way to address the, the small object problem, which is often a problem that models face is that uh, larger upfront objects are more commonly labeled, um, but things that are further away aren't so well. So uh, object detectors often don't, uh, don't see small objects very well. So um, I thought maybe, you know, maybe you could kind of be modularly zooming in and out um, of that space that is being cropped in the image. And that could uh, kind of start to change the distribution size of objects. Um, which right now the, that is staying um, completely flat with the way that the current crop is working. Um, and then another thing is to add in a probabilistic mosaic where it doesn't necessarily happen every time. So that means that you could kind of keep some of the ground truth of your training set without having to do mosaic every time necessarily. Um, now we're actually going to move on to a live demo. So here we're going to see uh, mosaic in real life. Uh, on the RoboFlow platform. So this is really exciting. I hope I hope you guys are excited as excited as I am. Um, here uh, we have uh, a mask wearing data set. So this is uh, what your data set will look like once you've loaded it uh, into RoboFlow, um, which that is uh, a very easy process. You just drag and drop your data in. Once it's in, then you uh, your bounding boxes are automatically matched and uh, you have your data set in RoboFlow so you can start using advanced augmentations like Mosaic uh, just with the click of a button. Um, so here's our mask wearing data set. It's got uh, images of people wearing masks or not wearing masks, importantly. Um, so here's an image. Uh, all these faces are tagged with masks, but you can see this guy actually doesn't have a mask, so that will be labeled as, uh, as no mask. Um, real quick, looking at our data set health check, Here's a very powerful feature in RoboFlow where you can start to introspect your data set and uh, sort of get a feel for the way things are looking. So here we can see we've got 806 masks and 148 no masks. So ideally, maybe we would throw a few more of those in there um, to have a little bit more balanced classes. Um, but importantly here, we have our annotation heat map, which shows that uh, annotations are actually kind of occurring up in this top part of the image. So maybe if we were worried about the bottom parts of the image, like right here where my hands are, um, then we, we might want to use Mosaic to be able to get more masked and unmasked people uh, in the corners of the image, actually. So um, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do that. So here you would click uh, Modify Data Set. Um, you can see we've got our splits here. Um, we can choose pre-processing steps. So maybe we want to make sure that all our images are 416 by 416. Say we know that's going to be kind of the, the inference size that we want to be going into uh, to be able to inference at the speed that we want to. Um, and then another thing we'll say here is uh, we want to do mosaic tiling. So here, uh, here we have a little jellyfish 
uh, depiction of what's going to happen uh, as we go through Mosaic. You can hit apply there. Uh, we'll choose uh, three augmentations. So this will multiply our training set by uh, three. Um, now, an important thing to know is that your validation set and your test set will not get augmented. They will get pre-processed, but they won't get augmented because uh, you want to be using those as sort of ground truth measures of the way that your, your model is improving in performance. Um, so once those are all set, we can go ahead and click Generate. I'll just call this a mosaic version. Um, and so you can kind of see what we're doing here. We're, we're going through, we're experimenting, we're trying to think about what sort of augmentations and pre-processing steps are going to lead to the best results for our data set. So we're generating these data sets and then we'll be going over to modeling um, to, uh, to then kind of go in and see which augmentations have really improved our data set the most. Uh, here we can choose uh, among all kinds of formats to download this, but I'll go ahead and skip that for today and we can just go ahead and look at the images. Um, so let's go ahead and view all images. And here we can see um, here all the mosaic uh, augmentations have occurred uh, and our data set is now split out into these uh, four by four tiles. Uh, so hopefully that will uh, take us uh, into the next level of our modeling. And uh, uh, this was an introductory video into mosaic data augmentation. Uh, I hope it brings you better model performance for many, many days to come. And uh, stay tuned for the, the next latest and greatest augmentations in computer vision. And uh, if you would be so kind as to subscribe below and like this video, uh, I would be uh, very much obliged by that, and uh, uh, we'll talk soon.